The favorite moment is when I got the invitation. It was at 2 a.m. My roommate was sleeping right there. I woke him up, I'm like, hey, hey, bro, I got the invite. The phone is coming in like 10 days. When I got it, I was so excited. I was wiggling like a little girl, like, ah, my package is here. Most memorable moment. It was when I opened the box, I suppose. I remember when I received it and I was showing everyone, I was like, look at this packaging, look at, look at the screen. So I hope the OnePlus 2 will have a better lens. Um, optical image stabilization is the only thing I ask. <laughs> I think it will be again like with high-end specs. That's what I'm thinking all about right now. The best thing about uh, OnePlus is that they actually do talk to us and uh, they do listen to us. So it makes me feel like being a part of the whole company itself, not just of the community. It's not like you just bought a phone and then that's it, because there's the whole other thing surrounding it. never settle. They have to keep in mind, in heart. I will never settle for less. And I think the OnePlus made a very good job to create a company which is based on the users. The biggest thing I want to see with the new phone is a solid operating system. The battery life is awesome, so keep it that way. I need a bigger screen and also a bigger battery and a better camera. That's what I'm looking for in OnePlus 2. Make it a masterpiece. This is the story of OnePlus and me. Oh, welcome, Pete. Uh, let's go straight to the questions, because I think the audience knows you well enough. Um, your motto, never settle is about disruption. Could you talk a little bit about that and the name OnePlus? OnePlus. Uh, uh, we, uh, actually, OnePlus and Never Settle the meaning is very similar. We just want to make a better situation to make it better. Never Settle, we are also we are actually 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 但它不是完美，但是是一种追求，是一种态度。So there's actually a lot of synergy between the brand OnePlus and、uh, Never Settle.、Um, OnePlus means we're not satisfied with the status quo, so it's One Plus and moving forward. Whereas Never Settle, it's not about perfection, but about the pursuit of something better. So that's where One Plus and our tagline Never Settle came from. You said your brand was about a revolt、uh, against ugly, poorly made phones with bloated software. Can you talk about the origins a little bit? How the, how the brand originated, where it originated from? Actually, we saw this in the media. 互联网的是一个大的趋势，这是我们看到互联网是未来，所以这个是一个新的电商的模式，它一定会颠覆这个传统的模式。但是有可能我们在，比如三年五年，它可能不会有革命性的变化，但是我相信，比如十年二十年后，这个一定是一个一个非常，就是我们相信它是一个趋势，这个会颠覆整个传统的这种模式。So in terms of disruption, we saw that there was an opportunity to disrupt the traditional mobile industry through e-commerce, because we see e-commerce as the future.、Um, and eventually, maybe in three to five years, most of, the, most of the volumes will still come through traditional channels. But we believe that in 10, 20 years, most people will be buying their phones through e-commerce channels because of its sheer efficiency. So we will not be able to do the same thing, and not be able to do the same thing. So we'll consistently be an e-commerce company, and we'll, you won't see OnePlus, you know, at offline traditional retailers. And in this way, we can save costs for our users and pass on the savings. 
One of the most striking features about OnePlus is the design of both the hardware and the software. Um, you are passionate about design. It's one of the things that you constantly talk about. Can you talk a little bit about that today?其实我相信今天在座的都是比较科技对科技比较感兴趣的是科技前沿的一些用户一些人群那实际上我们现在目标的用户群也是一些对科技非常热衷的一些用户那我们会希望把更新的一些科技带给我们的用户给他们的这个
more importantly, in terms of the product, if the users like the product and people like our product, uh, they'll buy the product. Now, profit and making margins is you know, a result. It's not a goal. Our goal is still to make a product that people want to use and people want to buy. And then once you get the users, once you get the people, then it's really hard to not make money. Let's talk about India a little bit, your largest market. And India just crossed, uh, overtook the United States and became the world's second largest smartphone market. And India is a very competitive market as well. You have the Samsung, which has been a number one seller for a long time. You have um, you know, Apple, which is refocusing and re-strategizing for the Indian market. You have also Indian brands like Micromax and Intex. Where do you, how do you see your India strategy from here on?呃，我们我们做印度市场也好，做欧美市场也好，我们首先我们自己的定位很清楚，就是我一定要做最好的产品，这个是我们的定位，我们绝对不会去做便宜的，然后做我自己的觉得不好的产品，这个是我们对一个
然后把服务做好，这个是我们呃要去关注的。So we see a lot of similarities between the India market and the China market uh, from a few years back. And one thing that happened in China is that everything changes very quickly. Business models that work one day will not work the next day. Um, if you look at Apple, they always maintain to the same strategy and just go down their own path. They don't really look at or take into consideration the competition too, too much. So for us, it doesn't matter if it's the India market or if it's the Europe and North America market. We're still going to maintain two. We're still going to maintain our core core values, which is number one, product, and number two, e-commerce, and passing the savings on through e-commerce with a more effective model. We can see that in India, uh, also many companies come in, and then they fight for the price. It seems like one is cheaper than the other. But you can think about which company is because of the fight for the price, which is successful. So right now in the mobile market, we can see a lot of new companies are coming in to India and starting price wars. But if you look at historically, which which companies have been have been uh, successful and established long term after, due to pricing and price wars? What kind of things do you think uh, smartphones will do in the future? Let's take a different track. Um, can you crystal ball gaze a bit and talk about what you think are the innovations that smartphone makers will come up with in the next few years? future, so so it seems like the market is a bit commoditized right now, but if you look at it, are you satisfied wholly with your own smartphone right now? I think there's still a lot of room for improvement in both hardware and software product, and there are going to be a lot of differentiating factors, but we shouldn't focus on what we call black marketing, which is uh, marketing just for the sake of marketing and product. So for example, on uh, OnePlus 2, we started using the USB Type-C, and this is to solve a problem for the users. When you plug in your USB cable, you never know which way to plug it in. And with Type-C, you're able to plug it in both uh, up and down. So it's, uh, it's these small innovations that are going to keep happening. Right now, the big debate in uh, the United States is about Apple being asked to provide access to encrypted data by the FBI. So there's a big uh, security versus privacy debate. What, is your, what are your thoughts on that? So we support what Apple has done. I mean, you have, whenever we think of a problem or whenever we think of something, it's from the user's perspective and it's from the user first. Um, there are a lot of entrepreneurs in the room. So what advice do you give entrepreneurs? Because you came from a really humble background yourself and you sort of made your way up. Um, uh, are you able to tell people here something that helped you that you didn't read anywhere else or nobody told you? Some piece of advice. Mm. 
呃，其实我们创业，我们也就有两年的时间，做一个。呃，从我们在创业的第一天到现在，我们一直相信一个东西，说人一定要信仰。就如果我们因为在座的今天，呃，在座的肯定有很多是做是创业者，但是我只想说，你做一个事业一定要有信仰，叫 believe， 就你要相信一些东西。只有你相信了，你才能坚持，并且你所有的东西你要不要看短期，要看长期。你今天如果你说你我们要创业做一个事业，如果你是说我就是看好像啊三年五年我可以挣很多钱。我相信这一定成成为不了一个伟大的这个公司，就你一定要看二十年、二十年、三十年，这个是我觉得是，呃，很重要的。就你一定要相信一些东西，要有信仰。So one advice to entrepreneurs is probably believe, believe in your own fundamentals, believe in your own product, and believe in your own direction. And only by believing can you sustain and have a long-term plan and a long-term goal. So I don't think anyone is going to succeed if they think. In three to five years, I'm gonna cash out and make a lot of money. But you, the the main thing is that you have to have a long term, long term viewpoint, and through this long term, you have to believe in things that you stand for, even when you know there are external factors trying to shake you along the way. 比如在这个过程里面，你必须要，你肯定会遇到很多的这种压力和诱惑，但你要坚持你的这个信仰。比如说我们今天看到有很多公司可能打价格战，那你是不是要跟着去打？很多人去做千元机，它的规模突然一下会很大，你要不要做？这都是你能不能坚持你的信仰的一个很重要的一个表现。So, for example, we have as One Plus, we have a lot of pressure, external pressure.、Um, but can you maintain through this pressure? For example, there's a lot of price war going on in in、uh, in in India. Do we want to join this price war, or do we want to maintain our own premium space? Uh, there's a low low price products are selling really well in the market these days. Do we want to make start making low price,、uh, lower quality products, or do we still want to maintain this premium product? 最后告诉告诉大家一个例子，就是那个苹果，我们那个苹果同事的那个例子。比如说十年前在中国开第一家店的时候，一天只有二十个顾客，但是今天翻的是百倍、千倍。So another example, the first Apple store that was started in China in Beijing. We had a. We were just talking to a colleague today, about, and he he used to work at the first Apple store ever in Beijing.、And、he told us the foot traffic was only 20 people a day at this Apple store. Now Apple has maintained their belief throughout these past 10 years, and now the foot traffic has increased a thousandfold. 也就是十年的时间，短短十年。So it's only in a short term of 10 years that they've been able to achieve this. Um, I do want to ask a personal question. What is the best thing about being Pete Lau, and what's the worst thing about being Pete Lau? Uh, actually, I think if you can enjoy this product and enjoy making the product, I feel very happy. I think this is because I always think that I'm a product person. But if you can't achieve the result you want, you will be very disappointed. 非常的不开心，但我觉得这个，因为我一个一个对我们讲，我觉得产品是我们的核心，所以我也喜欢做产品，我也很享受这个过程。那其实我至少我现在我很享受。So, uh, Pete really enjoys the process and has feels joy when creating products, and he is a product-focused person. Um, I think the worst part of being Pete Lau is. When the product can't meet expectations, then you feel a lot of frustration. But at least today, we can feel happy for the for the products. There's a leaked video doing the rounds, which is supposed to be one plus three.、Um, what can we,、uh, you know, what can you tell us about the launch date, the specifics, the price about one plus three? What is it going to be called? Is that the name? Uh, that is what we get. 一加三会在二季度发布，反正好东西不会便宜。<laughs> so One Plus Two is going to launch in Q2 of this year, and then, I mean, good products are never going to be are never going to be too cheap. 并且我们相信，因为我们看到 MWC 的这些产品的发布，我们很自信会成为这个今年最值得购买的旗舰机。So after seeing the products that were launched at MWC yesterday and today, we're even more confident that One Plus Three is going to be the Most worthwhile phone to purchase for this year. Thank you. We are out of time.
But I do want to join the audience in thanking Pete for being here today, as well as your candid answers. Thank you, Pete. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you. Stephen.